So the first question is on the topic of airlift. Why has Cayman Airways not continued the early morning flight to Miami on a daily basis? <laughs> Should I go sit over there? <laughs> As it did when it competed with American for the same route. Thank you so much for the question. Um, and before I answer, it's a good question because it, it's a question of wanting more. So that's a good way to start. Before I answer the question, I want to take this opportunity to thank my staff and the ministry. By all means, we're all politicians, but we're policy makers. The people who do all the hard work or the civil servants who work every day so hard for our country. And I want to give them the credit. Put their hands together for my team at the Ministry of Tourism and the Department of Tourism. To answer your question, it's just a matter of management. Um, after COVID, we were doing the exercise of um, trying to get ourselves back up to where we once were, and everybody enjoyed it before. Um, so it's a matter of supply and demand, and I asked the same question because a number of people raised it, why are we not doing the daily morning routes? And it's just a matter of supply and demand, and it wasn't enough to, to justify from a spend perspective, so they, they only did certain days which seemed are reasonable and profitable and logical. Uh, I'm happy to say though that there are trends now showing that they're gonna try to bring those back online because the demand is, is coming up. Um, and I just got off the phone because I, I suspected Cayman Airways would have been a question and, and asked some, for some as, as recent updates as possible. So I know that we are bringing back the morning flight on Monday, which is a one that is important for coming back on a long weekend and getting back to work into the office. So I know you guys will be excited about that, but I hope that sometime in this year that we'll have all seven um, Monday, um, morning flights back online. Okay, thank you, thank you. Just, just keeping on the topic of airlift, if tourism's focus is quality over quantity, why do we need to extend the runway to accommodate long haul European budget airlines as proposed? Well, uh, if you notice the tune of my delivery, it's about um, opportunities for growth um, and, and balance. And what COVID taught us was that you don't want to rely too heavily on one, any one industry, particularly with the geopolitics um, that's happening now. If the United States, for some reason, had a reduction in travel, you want to make sure that you have a number of different um, baskets that you can tap into to allow businesses to continue to, to operate. Um, hence the reason you would see us um, now starting to go into Panama, which I'm happy the Chamber um, is excited about because we can get into the South American market. Um, Long-term, um, long-haul flights will allow us to get into the Asian and European markets. And as we, if the vision that we have and we're given the opportunity to continue with that vision, we believe that there'll be a better opportunity for spread of different models and products. And a European model can be um, implemented here in the Cayman Islands because it's not as equal to the American model. They stay a lot longer because they've traveled a longer distance. And they like more boutique opportunities rather than three to four days. So it's about diversifying our offerings. We don't want to be reliant only on one. Thank you, Minister. During your presentation, you would have spoken about the grants to create the new experiences as, as part of the diversification of our product. The question that's coming is what accountability will these companies have in return for these grants and what checks and balances we put in place to ensure that the companies actually achieve what is set out to once the grant is paid? Well, it's important to, to recognize it is a grant and by all means, I don't expect 100% or I, I hope they can get 100% success, but there's a probability that some may not make it all the way through. And we are copying the model as DCI and the Small Business Development Office created. And this grant is quite similarly, but just in a tourism um, context. And the due diligence models where there's follow-ups, you have to um, do um, a business plan, your marketing plan, um, show history of, of your accounts and stuff like that, as well as if you don't have that business model knowledge, be willing to take some classes and training as to that. Um, so it's a, it's a hand-holding exercise, 
But bearing in mind, as I said in my speech, it's not only about brand new business owners. It could be a part of existing enterprises, but it's about bringing new experiences. The purpose of this grant is to, to encourage and incentivize persons to tap into something brand new. Um, there's a reason why we, we try to ex go to other Caribbean islands and steal their ideas, <laughs> is, is we want to make sure that we have as many options as possible for our guests, because it will help us with this spread of, of products across the island, which we believe ultimately will help with the negative effects that we've been feeling. So if you think about um, right now, there's probably 80% of our guests do experiences from Georgetown to West Bay. We can alleviate so much pressures just by getting 30% of them going to the east and have the same numbers, same benefits, same taxes and fees, same job opportunities. So it's about management. And I think that this visitor development grant can incentivize them to say, listen, oh, you came up with this amazing idea. We think it's good. And I, as I said before in my speech, it's not going to be just another tourist in city. We've got loads of them. Um, it's something new that will attract people to go to different, um, desti different areas of the island. And that's what the cruise industry has been speaking about. Stayover is doing a great job. And I'm proud of all the hoteliers, the condos, and the Airbnbs. You guys have, are taking them all and continuing it as before. So this strategy is more about managing the cruise industry with the realities of what we're facing from a reduction amount and spreading them better so the residents are not negatively affected, but at the same time, the businesses can make opportunity from a financial perspective. Thank you. You're very popular today. There are tons of questions coming in. There That's are, what happens when you go after the premier. <laughs> there are a few on Seven Mile Beach. I'll probably try to lump a couple of them together. Um, one is, what progress is being made with the beach reclamation from the Marriott to pass Royal Palms on Seven Mile Beach? And the sort of same sort of point would be around beach erosion is becoming a, a problem along some structures on Seven Mile Beach. Is the government considering strategies to address this? Let's repo those two together as the Seven Mile Beach question. Well, I, I think it would be a question more suited for um, the Premier. Um, but I can say that we want to find a solution that is beneficial to the industry as well as to the taxpayer's pocket. Because if you would recall before, we um, allocated $20 million in our previous budget to address the beach erosion. Um, and then naturally the questions um, came up from your local community, okay, that $20 million is my taxpayer's money. So am I allowed to go to that beach? So those questions came up, and we have to find a unique uh, way of addressing how that relationship is going to be done. And one of the ways is partnering with the, the, those who are affected. Because as Minister of Tourism, I can't do the numbers that I want to do if their um, product is not as attractive as it once was. So I know that with the new Minister for Sustainability who looks at the focus of the environmental effects, we're working on a solution. I am certain that the Premier and the Minister will have some announcements in the future to find that balance. But we, this government wants to find a solution to it in short order. Thank you. So there are a couple questions on public transportation. I know in your presentation you had mentioned about getting to our locations of a, a happier mood. So, so the, the primary question here is how far along are we in the implementation of a public transportation system and is there any update that you can provide? I'm conscious of stepping out of uh, my area of responsibility from a tourism perspective, but I can say to you that the, the, recently the minister has um, indicated that he will be presenting the finalized report for us to consider. Um, but I want us to, to recognize that um, the traffic issues that we're facing isn't only about a public transportation system. And I've always talked about this palm approach that, that I was envisioning when I was the Minister of Transport. And the reason for that transition over to, to um, Jay's minister, the Honorable Minister, was because he was in charge of roads. And logically, from a transportation perspective, you want those two um, entities together. But the, the plan that I was discussing and I, and I spoke to the minister about, and I know that we're actively all trying to do it, 
was one, a public transportation system, a strategy for decentralization of, of, of business center, um, strategies where the civil service is already operating, which is businesses allowing people to work from home, also the reduction of, of vehicles, um, particular type of cheaper vehicles that, that create everybody and, and their sister to have a, have a vehicle um, and we think that some of those um, policies have already been in place that reduce the quick demand of a vehicle for everybody to have a car. Um, and we think the combination of all of these approaches together, like I said before, it's no one magic bullet to solve the problem. We think collectively all of those things incrementally will have a better improvement over time. But the main thing, I must say, is the decentralization with the airport, um, the east-west arterial because we have developed this side of the island for too long without, a, without thinking about the fact of managing our lands that we do have. Um, granted, uh, I don't think I want to say that this side is the, the best looking side because my colleagues from the east would, would beat me up, but this is where the tourism component is. It's, it's about time for us to reconsider and think of a new town in the east. And you, the business community, I would love for you guys to present to our Honorable Premier a strategy. Think in the future. Think 50 years from now. You know, I'm quite sure we can find some sort of model that will work together for all of us that would help in that respect. Thank you. Now, you did mention the challenges that we are experiencing of cruise tourism. So the question is, given that a large percentage of Caymanians are employed in the cruise tourism sector, what proactive measures are the government taking to ensure the stability and growth of this important industry? Well, we've been doing that for, from, at least from when I've been minister, which is I recognize from uh, once we took the government in the middle of COVID, it was going to take a lot of efforts to try to get the cruise industry back online with, with COVID being a major factor, but also with the fact that they're moving into larger ships. Um, so you would have seen that I've made a number of travels. Um, every opportunity that I can meet with them, I brought them here, all the execs. I go to their conferences every time there's an annual meeting or even biannual meeting, we sit and talk. So we have a very strong relationship, I'm happy to say that. Um, and also, actually, they're coming to visit, um, Madam Premier, is the next week, I think, in the week after next, after Parliament, I can't remember, I think it's about two or three weeks from now. And they're coming down so we can continue this dialogue because the cruise industry has said Cayman is a place of high demand, but it's that decision between high demand and where the, the bottom dollar amounts, because there's, there's a point of diminishing returns when the quality of getting people on and off the ship starts to curve in the wrong direction. So we are focusing our efforts on more higher end um, products, trying to incentivize them to come, and also consider working with um, you know, private sector partners like Income and Brack. Um, by all means, I, I can't be here to, to try to show any support for any one developer, but I think that if uh, Mr. Schillen is successful in the BRAC, after going through the environmental um, um, concerns that, that are, that are the EIA that is necessary, that that will bring great opportunity to the sister islands. Um, and maybe it's about spreading some of those cruise opportunities and yachting opportunities um, to the sister islands. So basically to answer your question is a continued open dialogue relationship with the cruise industry and us being able to pivot whenever there's change. Um, so if, if we see a heavier decline over the next couple of years, um, the country will have to sit down and think about those repercussions, what that means. But at this moment, um, the, the industry and the public has indicated that we are comfortably at a place um, wherever there is loss in, in, in employment opportunities. I encourage the stayover um, sector to try to soak up some of those employees who used to be in crews so we don't have a negative effect in that respect. Um, but the businesses are trying better to get more money per passenger than before. So we're not at a an easy situation at this point, even though we don't have exactly the same numbers as before. Thank you, Minister. And unfortunately, we do have time for one last question. Um, I know that there are tons more questions. Unfortunately. <laughs> but sort of tying the, the earlier presentation from the Premier on, on education and, of course, um, to support uh, tourism, 
What plans do you have in conjunction with the Ministry of Education to expand, invest in, and promote vocational training and apprenticeships in tourism and other industries in Cayman, but to focus on tourism? Well, I, I don't think we have to put all our efforts there. I think there's enough um, programs that are happening in conjunction with education and our university um, already that focuses on tourism um, educational uplift. I think where the focus should be is how do we ensure the business owners are comfortable with what we are developing through an educational opportunities to ensure that they take them up. Because the, <laughs> The, res the research or the feedback that we get is that th though you may be trained and, um, and go to UCCI to get a study or you go off to do a, a university degree, there's no guarantee they'll come back and get home and get a job. So where, where we need to focus on is strengthening the relationship with our, our students coming back home, those who are in programs locally, um, working closely with CETA um, um, and, and asking them to have a, a strong look at these persons. Sometimes it's about, okay, the, the, the young person or the Caymanian is trained, but the question is now experience. So whether we work with programs of, um, you know, incentivizing the businesses to take them on for a period of six months with an incentive involved, which builds the experience and then you take them on moving forward. But I believe that with the new president that is there, um, the relationship is strong enough to continue that relationship with the industry to, to those Caymanians who are getting trained, who are coming back home, who are being trained locally to be fused into the industry.